The struggle for freedom took many forms during the Civil Rights Movement. In West Baton Rouge Parish, as in many other areas around the country, leaders arose to fight the injustices within their communities. My father was Freddie Williams, and he organized the West Baton Rouge Parish Voters League. He was not one that went out on the forefront, but through his churches, he made donations, and he did not walk across any of the picket lines that they had, but he saw that they had water or they had food or stuff like that. Richard and Lee Sr. and my dad worked very closely together. Everybody helped. Everybody helped anyway. Even if you were the negotiator, you were helping. That's how we came about with the Williams and Lee Park. There was a pool at the community center. We needed a pool on the back, and we got one. Just as negotiators were important to the civil rights movement, so were the individuals who were willing to protest. They were hiring white students, or kids, young people, but they didn't hire blacks, same age. So Edward Search and myself decided to go talk to the manager, why you don't have bag, I'm not talking about cashiers, bag boys and bag girls out here, you have whites. And the guy said, well, that's the way we want it. So we found out that the owners of it was in another state. We contacted whoever it was over these chain stores and told them we are about to pick at this store and we're going to shut it down. We walked almost 100 days before those people decided to give in. Edward Searcy and Ernest Allen were both instructors at Conn High School, the only high school for African Americans in West Baton Rouge Parish. Many of the students that attended Conn took the fight for equality with them into the halls of higher education. So many of our young people, this was a direct pipeline. You, you finished Conn, you went to Southern. And these young people loved Southern, but they also wanted equality. And every day, they would walk from Southern's campus. Can you imagine walking from Southern's campus to downtown Baton Rouge? She said, if you go into March, this person on the megaphone was saying, make sure that you follow the rules, that you do what you have to do. Make sure that, remember, this is not about you. It's about a movement. And somehow I got caught up because this line was moving, getting down to Scenic Highway. And he said, walk straight ahead. Don't leave. Don't move your face from side to side. Keep your body in line. Two together. But when we got down to Spanish Town Road on Scenic Highway, and we turned right and went down in that area, which was the white area. That's where you had the, the, a lot of the saloons, the bars, and that kind of thing, and the people who were on the streets. That's when we found that things were so different. They would say ugly things to us. They would spit at us. We couldn't, we couldn't break the line, and now we understood why we could not break the line. We had to stay at attention. We had to continue to march, and that's what we were doing, marching for what was right, because we were on the way to downtown, to the jail, because three of our students there from Southern were locked up and uh, we were there to protest. They had been a part of the sit-ins at press. But the thing that happened, as soon as we got downtown to near the, the courthouse, a couple of police cars came around. They opened the trunk and then they threw out the tear gas. I can still smell that stuff now. I can still feel it in my eyes, the tear gas. But the torment, the horrible things that were said to us on the way, I can tell you this. When we left Southern, we were children. But by the time we completed that march, and by the time we got to the jailhouse downtown, we became young men and women, I'm telling you. So those of us who went through those fights, those struggles, we did it for, for the reason to help those children who are coming up now. 